Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Football Manager 2016 and this is the third season with AC Milan and um, well, we've started, it's 9th of September, I mean it's a transfer window's closed first things first, as ever, let's get to the transfers now we've had some really interesting movement uh, not just for AC Milan but uh, across the footballing world in general um, so here's just a, uh, an idea of how much we spent uh, we had 17 million in players sold and we spent 33 million pounds in players brought in now obviously we had a big transfer budget or a bigger transfer budget this year due to the fact that we got in the champions league um which is a, they give you a ridiculous amount of money not to mention the club was already in pretty good financial state anyway that's one of the reasons why i picked AC Milan is just because i can't handle clubs that just fall into financial disrepair it's just i find that I, i've tried this at a low league level and even if with like consecutive promotions the club just hemorrhage money and it's so frustrating so being, a, being on the other side of the fence for once is uh, is nice. So players out. Um, the main sort of handful, obviously, we've got a few players who went really good enough. Uh, players sold next is Andre Polly. He's gone to Calgary. Uh, you can get an idea, really, that's his level, to be honest. He wasn't... I could never find a spot for him in the team, and when I did, he just didn't do anything. You know, He just wasn't up to scratch. I just was totally bewildered by... Um, how poor he was at times. I thought he was a lot better than this, but there you go. Um, we also sold Suso for just a shade under £7 million to Leicester. I thought for... I mean, he's, he's good, Suso. I like Suso. And I think he had a, he was treated unfairly at Liverpool, to be honest. I think he should have been given more of a chance. But on this, Leicester just came in one day with a £6.75 million bid, and I'm like, yeah, sure. Because <laughs> I couldn't find this really... Again, I couldn't find a spot for him in the team. So when someone comes in with that take it you know we, we can get a, a good replacement for him and as you can see we did and lastly uh jerson Verg vergara excuse me there sold to evian uh for two and a half million pounds never really played this guy but they came in with a two and a half million pound bid i accepted uh i've put eli and uh old chic on loan again uh gabriel that's not gabriel police of course that is the goalkeeper the backup goalkeeper to uh or the third choice goalkeeper now that donna rumors in um he was sold for just under a million pounds to barry uh, Torres has gone on loan. He, I cannot get rid of him. He will not leave. I couldn't even offer him um, a, a um, what's it called when you release someone on a free or a mutual termination because to, in order to do that we would have had to have paid him I think about eight million pounds, which I'm not doing. So um, as you can see, his contract is on one hundred and seventy five thousand pounds a week. Just for the record, I did not sign him. He was already here. I could do nothing about it, um, and he um, he will see how his contract that ends in the summer. So um, I just I just get rid of him. So he's, he's so he's not another mouth to feed, so to speak. You know he's um, he, he's he's on loan at the young boys, and yeah, he, he'll just stay there, and then his contract goes, and then he's someone else's problem. Just get rid of him. He's taken up nine percent, nine percent of the wage bill at the moment. So once he goes, then that's going to be a huge lift off my shoulders. But I just simply could not get rid of him. He wouldn't accept mutual termination to release him on a phrase and say would well, cost. I think it was like eight, nine, ten million pounds, which is preposterous. And no one upon no one would buy him. So the only people who wanted them were on loan, and I couldn't even accept. I couldn't even get them to accept any of the wage. So I'm just gonna have to take one for the team, so to speak. Here, uh, Niang has also gone on loan to Nice. Now this he hasn't really kicked on as much as I thought. I mean he's okay, but I mean if you look last year, I mean he scored seven goals. I mean it's not bad, but at the minute he's. I mean he's made one appearance so far from Nice and wasn't great. So I'm just really waiting for him now to, you know, really get into second gear and go. Right, I am now good enough to play for AC Milan. At the minute, I'm not really seeing it. So that's it. And lastly, uh, Mastali here was sent to Empoli for, for a handy four million pounds. These are just players I've never even looked at before, and I'm getting them, you know, two, three, four, five, six million pounds for them. I'm happy for that. So um, these are players you brought in. There's only four. The first one is Christian Benteke, who was sold by the God knows who the Liverpool manager is now. It's oh yeah, that's right, it's David Moyes. Of course it is, <laughs> obviously. Um, he for 5.75 million i think that's an absolute steal uh, he's i think he might be the missing piece well there's two missing pieces i think um that you know i think really could take us over the line now that really could give us the, the opportunity to challenge for event uh, to, to uh, sort of start that again to challenge juventus for Serie A. uh we also have fabinho uh who for a long time was or for a long time for a small period was the most expensive signing of this transfer window um for us we have 23 year old brazilian player here um, from well, he signed for Bayern. It's, I just I, the computer still does this, and I don't know why. Not to say that it doesn't happen in real life. I mean, I did it myself for God's sake. 
Um, but you know they'll sign a player, not use them, and then just sell them on for a, a substantial loss. I mean, okay, yes, Paulista wasn't a substantial loss, but um, I really like this guy. He's good. He currently plays for Monaco, uh, having signed for. Okay, he's at Real Madrid and everything. He was on loan at Real Madrid. Right. Okay, that's a strange one. Um, but yeah, this Fabinho looks pretty good. Then we'll use him. Uh, a player who I've signed before previously, I think on FM fourteen, I think. Uh, Jason Murillo, uh, otherwise known, I think Dr. Benji described him once as Jason Derulo or something or other. Uh, I've not had him at this age though. I think I, I had him when he was he was at least ten years older. So this is quite good. Um, really, I, li I like this guy a lot. As I say, he's done me quite well before in the past. So I'm excited to see he's going to be the, the sort of Palisa replacement. Then so we've got sort of four centre backs now. We've got Zapata, Stones, Mangala, and Murillo. I think that's pretty solid if you ask me. And lastly, Javier Pastore. So I've been looking at this guy for a long time, and you all know Pastore, for God's sake. But um, I've been looking at him for ages, waiting for the time, waiting for the moment that his price will drop to something. Um, that is, I, I would deem acceptable, and 15 and a half million was more than that. So um, I've, I've put a bid in, and yeah, okay, his wages are pretty ridiculous, but um, he's a quality player. You know, you all know him. I hope so, anyway. Um, and he again, him and Benteke, I think, are the two miss were the two missing pieces that we didn't have last season. He put that together with Carlos Backer and uh, you know whoever else we've got in the squad here. So this is the full squad. Um, Actually, no, we won't. So we've got Lopez and Donnarumma. I think that's a fairly solid two goalkeepers there. We've got Fabinho, uh, Fabinho who will come in for the Siglio, who is not in uh, good state at the moment, an injury. He's out for three weeks, I think. Oh, oh, sorry, that's half now. Sorry, he's out for a week or so. Zapata, Mangala, Stones, Morello, they're two centre backs. We've got Abate, who's the new captain. Uh, Montalivo has been. Uh, I've tried to sell him on numerous times. He has resisted uh, completely. He's turned down many offers. Uh, I think he's turned down about four or five different ones he wants to stay but the problem is I, I can't actually say to him look you can stay but you're not going to get many games and now he's he's slightly concerned again so it's like well I, there's a reason why I tried to sell you one there's no intel player intelligence still very lacking uh, Calabria uh, he's hopefully going to turn good he's, he's still only quite young as Antonelli injured Mandelson, uh, I'm probably not going to I don't know whether I think I have given him a new contract actually to 2019 but I think once that expires that will be it then he's going to go the young the vice captain there's Montalivo not going to have too many games I don't think he's not really good enough in my opinion about Alachi's there uh, Mari who I say has been completely sensational over the last few uh, the last year or so he's currently injured Bonaventura Blajikowski Menez Honda Alvarez Pastore Ramos Benteke and Baca who is just coming back from that terrible injury he got at the end of last season so there we go that is the current state of things. So, as you can see, we're in the Champions League. I'll address that first. Ajax. We played Ajax, and we managed to win 2-1 uh, Jeremy Menez with two penalties, believe it or not, um, as we got two big away goals in Holland. Um, this was a really... I mean, the best playoffs draws now are nowhere near... Oh, sorry, are nowhere near as easy as they used to be. Um, I remember when Liverpool were in it, and we played, like... God, who was it? Some... I don't even know, like Standard Liège or someone, you know, someone not particularly great. Ajax is a total different, you know, totally different team, much more quality in, in, the, in the way in their team. And um, two penalties made lucky, but Menez, fair play to him, he scored them both. He wasn't great last season, he, he did it, he, he went through patches of goodness, but uh, he, I mean, Benteke had a poor game here, but he certainly did make that up, make up for it. Uh, in the league, which we'll go over in a couple of minutes. And we also had a repeat scoreline here, Mangala and Menez scoring again. Um, Van Rijn here did score briefly uh, for about six minutes to give them a bit of hope. There's Luke Remy. I mean, I'm quite sure what Menez did there, tackle, and it just went straight to him. Uh, I don't think that, I can't remember what that was uh, at that stage, whether that counted uh, towards um, putting the, actually at that time, as in the, at that time they were going through, but. Uh, Thankfully, it didn't sound it didn't matter either because Mangala scored. Sorry, it made a total mess of my words there. <laughs> uh, I wasn't quite sure because the um, the away goal rule, it's like, anyway, it doesn't matter. Here's Mari doing really well. Um, he just pushes forward very well. And Blachikowski, you all know him by now. He's just fantastic. He whips them crosses and he's got real pace. He's just so good at that. And he has probably been the best signing I've had <laughs> of them all. Hopefully, Ben Teke or Pastore will change that. But um, yeah, we managed to go through. Beat Ajax wasn't um, wasn't easy, but it was there. Uh, ignore the friendlies here. We we did lose the Super Cup final, but I'm really not concerned by that. We got battered by Wolfsburg, but again, I, I don't care about the results. 
It's all about just getting fitness at that stage. So uh, we've scored two in the first game and scored two in the second game. Zero conceded in both. Benteke with two goals here. And this really was... Uh, don't let these stats fool you. We got battered in this game. Uh, we were just more clinical overall. Um, every highlight virtually was for Roma. Second half we it was a bit more, but certainly in the first half, um, we just every highlight was a Roma chance, and they just kept squandering them. They were so poor finishing wise. But you know we got a few chances here. I, one thing I did was I noticed straight away that um, counter seemed to work, so I sort of swapped that. And there's Blazikowski and Benteke. It wasn't a debut goal, but it was technically in the league. It was a home debut. Um, lovely head of this. Check this out. Bang! Classic Benteke there. Really good goal. And then uh, he scored again against Sassuolo here and Jeremy Menez. And scoring again. That was enough, uh, really. I mean, we, we haven't really got our second gear yet because Roma didn't really require us to. Um, I mean, pretty shocking goalkeeping there. Good free kick, to be fair, from Blazikowski, but terrible goalkeeping. Um, because Roma were just so poor with their finishing and uh, Sassuolo really didn't give us much of a chance. Uh, to really get out of second gear because they were again just so poor um, they really didn't offer much I mean I know they had the corner there but they just you know they were just lacking and uh, there's Benteke on the scene so he's had a terrific start to the season so is Menez um, and now we're going off against Torino so this is our Champions League group um, and this is remarkably I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jinx no I'm not because I'm going to jinx myself with the say I was about to say it but no um, but if you look we're playing Benfica Zenit and that team <laughs> Starbake I think it'll ah, whatever never heard of them um, Norwegian team you, look if you're Norwegian you know how to pronounce that it's that team okay <laughs> um, so I think that's really easy considering you know what we could have what we could have got so if we look you know look Juventus and City obviously get drawn together Real Madrid and Dortmund there. there's Atletico and Borussia Mönchengladbach Porto and Shakhtar that was the other easy one but look at that I mean, we could have got Arsenal and Barcelona Bayern and Man United Chelsea and Paris Saint-Germain but I think we've done quite well there. I think we've got very lucky and you can't even say I've cheated because the draw is the same as far as I'm aware every time you, you can save it before the draw and reload it and do it again and it will come out at virtually identical draw if not identical so uh, yeah can't even accuse me of cheating that one <laughs> I like that. Right, anyway, moving on to the live game here. So we're going to have Donnarumma in goal with Abate, Stones, Mangala and Calabria with um, the Siglio being injured and Antonelli also being injured. Uh, De Jong, let me change him just to defend. Uh, he, has, he has the uh, ball winning with Fiala here. Then we've got Blazikowski, Bertolacci and Pastore who's playing as a wide playmaker at the moment. Uh, and then Benteke and Menez up front. Baka is still injured as, as you saw. He still has the orange injury mark next to him. So I decided to not uh, risk him. Uh, I mean, Ramos can come on as well. As you can see, he has done already a few times this season. Back it just hasn't. I've not risked him at all. So, um, yeah, just a note on that. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go from here. Here we go, then. So, Torino. Uh, that is the former Watford player, Matai Vidra. Yes, he's still only 25. And that's young. Oh, hang on. Do they have Diego Poyet? Former Derby legend Diego Poyet. They do, indeed. So that's actually not the worst team in the world. And Daniel Padelli, former Liverpool goalkeeper, of course. What was that about? He was a terrible goalkeeper, wasn't he? What was that period when Liverpool just signed simply the worst goalkeepers? I mean, there was Padelli, there was Etanje, God, and who else? There was one more, wasn't there? Um, oh, God, I can't think of who it was. Jersey Dudek, I suppose, <laughs> for all his Champions League um, winnings and everything. He uh, wasn't the best goalkeeper at times, was he? I mean, he did, he did he, look, he was good at times, but also he was equally as bad. You know, it wasn't overly consistent, shall we say. Um, so, in terms of actually starting this third season, I think it has been really positive. I've not changed much in the way. Here's Benteke, going close there. Diego Poyet's another one who I'm, I'm really interested in perhaps bringing back again, hopefully as a replacement for Nigel De Jong. I can't imagine he's going to be um, particularly expensive either so I might look at that in the, in the near future especially now that I know he plays in Italy here's Menez going forward As you, so if you didn't watch my Derby save on FM15 or any of the recap videos or anything like that uh, he was fantastic for me He, him and a young player called Callum Cook who plays for I think Middlesbrough at the moment uh, developed a truly astonishing midfield partnership I mean it was um, I can't even think who I could even compare it to. There's, there's the centre backs combining again. Mangala with a flick on and John Stones with the header in. 1 0 Milan. 
So yeah, um, I can't remember. I think they were both. One was a halfback, which I think was Poyet, and Cook was a regista, I think. And they were just fantastic together. I, I don't know if it was some sort of chemistry thing or whether the, the roles just worked or something, but um, it's still the best midfield partnership I've ever had in Football Manager, those two. If, if you ever see them um, in a future FM or in a future save, and they really should have scored there, uh, get him. His name's Callum Cook, that's Cook with an E, and he's fantastic, really is. Um, he's, I think he's 17, 18 at the start of the game, so he might have to wait a few years, and he might have been downgraded on FM 16, so I've not, I'll be honest, I've not had a look at him. And I suppose the same could be said for Poyet as well. Um, and if we have a look, it's so a West Ham currently, isn't he, in real life? Uh, let's see, oh, he's not bad. It's not bad, yeah, they've sold him to uh, to Reno. So I'm going to see how he gets on in the Italian League. I mean, he might deteriorate completely and be terrible, but um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll see how we get on. Uh, and maybe we can try and get Cook and um, Poyet back again. Who knows? So um, I just want to point out as well that uh, I'll, I'll keep occasionally reminding you of this just because uh, in case any people you know like to dip in and out of the videos or whatever um, i don't plan on staying at milan forever this is not going to be like a one to, you know one team save uh, because i do want to do this sort of mini pentagon well i say mini pentagon it's not really a pentagon at all because uh, it's one continent but i'm going to try and stay in europe for this entire save and i'm going to try and win as many european leagues as i can and i include the obscure leagues in that there's a chance for benteke good block um, so that and I include, you know, like Norway, Finland, Sweden, Ireland, Russia, you know, hopefully even Luxembourg, maybe, I don't know, Liechtenstein, if they've got one. You know, I'm just going to try, I mean, obviously, I'll try and do that once I've built up a bit more of a managerial profile, otherwise it's just going to end in tears. Um, but, I think, oh, goodness me, it's an individual mistake. And that is, who was that? Donnarumma, perhaps, is a bit indecisive here. Maybe could have come for that, but why is Abate heading back there? I, I saw that coming a mile away as soon as he headed that. I have to go a bit more attacking now. Um, oh dear, I don't know. I'm not quite sure you could blame there really, but that's it. Wasn't the best header in the world from from Abate. Um, okay, we're gonna take off. Uh, go. Yeah, Pastore's not done anything, has he? Um, okay, we'll bring on Bonaventura as a winger and. Uh, Better. Lachi's looking nervous as well, but he's not been particularly bad. Okay, we're going to try Honda as well, uh, who can play a bit more attacking. So that's pretty frustrating. Just all our own fault there. And we really should be beating through. If we want to win the league, uh, which is, the, well, it's my own official aim. I'm not, I've not said it to the board. I've just said Europa League qualification just to be on the safe side. <laughs> they gave me more than enough funds for, winning the, uh, for, for getting uh, Europa League qualification. So all right, here's a chance here. Bonaventura, Mangala and Stones. How's it not gone in? The two centre-backs combining again. But this time to no avail. And look, there's De Jong with his customary rare yellow card. There's Benteke. Menez, brilliant work from the front two. Menez absolutely on fire at the moment. He's done really well. I think that's his fifth goal of this season already. And, uh, well, there we go. Honda with a free kick and good save by Daniel Padelli. And Bonaventura, if we can get one more, that will finish off completely. Bonaventura, by the way, now wearing Suso's old number, number eight. Which we needed a number eight. Because I know, as I say, in the Italian leagues, they wear all sorts of weird numbers and stuff. I've seen someone in the comments the other day saying someone wore, uh, I think it was eight plus one. So it equals nine or something stupid like that, right? Is Bonaventura a good block? Which I, I've never seen, but I actually do recall seeing that now that you mention it. So I thought that was quite funny. But yeah, I've never seen that anywhere else. But uh, a few more highlights coming in now, but it is all Milan at the moment. We do seem to be working well with this counter. I'm not quite sure why. I change it to counter and all of a sudden we get a few more highlights. There's Benteke and nearly, nearly squeezed in there. But as you can see, if you look at the match stats on the left-hand side, we have dominated this game. We are just going to... I am going to bring on off Menez. I know he's won us the game and everything, but I am just going to bring Zapata on just to be on the safe side. He looks a bit nervous as well, which is not something I ever really want to see. So we'll just put him in the middle here. Uh, and then Benteke can just sort of be this. Might as well be attacking because he's supporting, let's be honest. And we'll just bring Honda back as well. Um, you know, we'll just keep that. That's fine. And we will go with defensive for the last few minutes. Here, so just to see this one out. Torino haven't really offered much, and to say the, the goal 
uh, was purely our fault from Abate and Donnarumma. A bit of a lack of communication there between the two Italian players, so don't start blaming all that now, the language thing. <laughs> right, so two minutes of added time. Mangala on the ball, plays it to Honda, and that will do it, I think. Once this throw is taken, well, we got away with that one a little bit there. Abate and Donnarumma, as I say, not great, but Menez gets them out of jail, so that's nine points out of nine. Admittedly, we've conceded our first goal, but it's not the end of the world. We've just scored one less than Juventus, who have made some uh, signings, by the way, I just want to point out. Uh, let's see, there, there's their team, managed by Jürgen Lowe, in case you're wondering. They've got Abubakar, uh, Ocampos, uh, who else? They've made, how do I find their transfers? In fact, just go here, this would be easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, so they've got Alex Vidal, um, Malcolm from Corinthians, um, uh, Chillinson is that how you say it? I think is how you say it. And a few players they've uh, let go uh, include Jonathan Dos Santos, Sammy Kadir has gone to um, Schalke, not Gelsenkirchen, Asamo has gone to Arsenal, and Kingsley Coman has gone to Bayern. Doesn't he used to play for Bayern? Or am I going crazy? Oh, right. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That, that's why. Okay. Well, I had no idea he was on loan. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, okay. So, um, not bad. Not bad. Um, we can see the last goal, but so be it. And uh, the fans are still annoyed with Gabriel Pelista. I just brought you a brand new player in the form of Jason Derulo Ed Murillo. See? <laughs> you can't help it, can you? So, Menez's top goal scorer, Ambrosz Kowski, is just fantastic. Uh, De Siglio is injured and suspended, so that's a nightmare. But don't worry. <laughs> there, there's your player stats if you're uh, interested and yeah I think uh, we're going quite well so far so 9 points out of 9, 3 wins out of 3 pretty good, Juventus, look at that 2-0, 3-0, 2-0 but I mean they've played Lazio and they've thrashed Udinese who are oh, the 7th at the minute, Inter although they have only played 2 games well they got thrashed by Lazio and they also lost 2-0 to Udinese so that's always nice to see as well so thank you very much for watching we do have our first Champions League game. I think it's like Milan's first Champions League game for about six years. Maybe five or six years. Uh, that's going to be away at Zenit. I will do a Champions League game, a group stage game certainly, uh, in the coming, uh, probably in the next video, likely. Uh, I don't know which one it will be. Let's have a look at the schedule. We fancy this one against um, Stay Bake. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a completely Nordic... Uh, letter there and I've no I'm gonna research that and find out how you say it okay for the next video I will find out and um, report back so um, yeah hopefully you enjoyed so please hit the like button if you did and I will see you next time goodbye